for you, how much, if at all, do you look at analyst price targets? Well, you know, if you look at the data, actually, analysts uh, tend to aim too low in, in many cases. Uh, we don't particularly look at the analyst price targets, um, but the analysts can be pretty useful as specialists to digging into some of the details of companies. So, you know, obviously take these things with a grain of salt, as you said, do your own research, which is the way we, we try to focus on our stock selection. Uh, Brian, as you know, you know, we're, we're uh, hand pickers here. We only own about 45-ish stocks in a given client portfolio, and we're really looking for quality, which, by the way, we think is going to be increasingly important as we go through 2022, uh, particularly given what happened last year with some areas of the market. Yeah, and your list, Joanne, because you have such a concentrated portfolio, you'll take maybe one or two retailers, you know, one or two energy companies, and you're obviously considering those to be best in class, best in breed. TJX, the parent of TJ Maxx and Home Goods. Uh, Chevron, names you like. Yeah, right. You know, this year, we think uh, one of the areas that's likely to do well, you know, and the way we're thinking about this is follow earnings potential. Obviously, we saw a lot of appreciation last year. Some concentrated areas of the market did particularly well. Um, but, you know, this year, the, the concern has been inflation. The concern currently is COVID. Uh, but if you look beyond sort of the short, we, what we think will be a short-term COVID problem uh, and, and then look at where inflation is likely to go and the Fed pulling back on some of that accommodation, quality we think is going to be really important. And we do think we're going to see more of that reopening trade kicking in later in the year uh, as this particular wave of COVID recedes. And that's why we think, for example, a TJ Maxx and the home goods stores uh, will do particularly well as people start going back out to brick and mortar once again. Uh, and also, you know, a company like Six Flags, which has a lot of outdoor uh, entertainment possibilities, we think does well over the next year or so. And these are companies with good, strong, loyal customer bases. Uh, and so when you look into those kinds of details, you do get a lot of uh, earnings potential uh, for this year. We think that's likely to drive valuations. Yeah, it's, you know, Six Flags, I know they're primarily outdoors, and that's kind of like a theme. Doesn't sound like you're, you're is that a reopening play, or is that just more of like, hey, the economy is going to do what it's going to do play? Yeah, it's both, Brian. And I mean, clearly, consumers are pretty flush, right? Household balance sheets are really strong. And so, you know, that inflation that everybody's worried about is really coming from the strength of the consumer. And so even as, you know, the Fed tries to get inflation under control, that reopening play plus ongoing recovery of the economy, we think helps to feed more into personal income. They have more spending power. They go out to something like, like a Six Flags. And, and people really need to remember heading into this year that uh, there's a lot more reopening and recovery in the economy to happen. We still have lots of shortages. And that's another reason why inflation is elevated because of the shortages in semiconductors and cars and you know, across the board. And so as supply continues to come back online, yeah. we think there are a lot of opportunities. And then you can, you know, go look at some of the growth names that we've talked about before, Brian, as opportunities for even longer term appreciation.